some of the RESTful APIs that um, the experience platform uh, exposes um, are uh, actually uh, gateways into a um, uh, very large and distributed uh, Kafka service that uh, another team within our organization um, maintains. Uh, currently, we have presence in around 13 regions with 25 production clusters and uh, 45 clusters overall. Um, daily, it ingests around 300 billion messages or 300 terabytes. And the out traffic is um, around 900 terabytes per day. Uh, at a more granular level, uh, our lar largest Kafka cluster has 40-something um, brokers. Um, it uh, ingests 1.2 million messages per second. Uh, that's roughly 900 megabytes. And the, um, the out traffic is uh, peaking at 2.3 uh, gigabytes per second. Um, and our largest topic gets somewhere uh, between 14 and 16 um, billion messages per day uh, with uh, the in traffic around 400 megabytes and the, um, and the out traffic at um, 1.33 gigabytes per second. Um, so this Kafka service actually stands at the, at the core of the experience platform. Um, it uh, ingests data from external clients uh, through data collection APIs and uh, batch APIs. Uh, however, it is also used by um, internal teams in order to exchange uh, data between one another. So they, they do that either um, with direct Kafka access, access or um, we also provide some HTTP APIs to, uh, to facilitate that. Uh, so very often, um, teams want to do simple operations with, uh, with this data. Uh, most use cases don't actually involve, don't even involve windowing aggregations or, um, or late uh, data handling. Um, most of the times, um, teams want to filter out data. So uh, for example, a client might not be subscribed for, for a feature or a product. So um, teams might not want to uh, ingest messages coming from that client. Uh, so we would uh, filter that data out for them. Uh, another use case would be validating um, messages against uh, against the schema. So uh, as an example, before um, updating a profile, we want to make sure that, that a certain message um, contains the, the correct fields and uh, the fields are of the correct data type. And uh, another, another use case would be to uh, map messages. Um, so if we are um, ingesting data from external clients, uh, we would, before actually doing something with, with that data, we would uh, want to transform it to, uh, to comply with our uh, internal uh, schemas. Um, so these use cases are very easy to uh, achieve and implement if we're thinking about uh, short term, uh, but long term, one might ask, might start asking questions like, um, what what is the the time and effort to come up with a CI/CD uh, pipeline for every single use case, or uh, where should we deploy the the use cases? Should we provision new Kubernetes clusters, or should we just provision new namespaces? Um, how to add um, logs and metrics to, to, the, to the applications, and where to expose them? Um, how to optimize the Kafka producers and consumers uh, for, uh, for maximum throughput? Uh, which frameworks to invest time in? Uh, Beam, Flink, Spark, or Kafka Streams? Um, how to detect and recover from um, a fault and how to do so uh, without losing any data and um, how to scale the pipeline in case uh, there is a traffic burst. Um, so the product that we built is, uh, is meant to address these questions for uh, all the teams inside the, within the uh, experience platform. So our approach was let's have a team focused on the event streaming infrastructure, and this way everybody else will be freed up to uh, to to focus on the on the business rules. 
So we built a framework on top of um, Apache Beam and we, we chose Beam because uh, it gives us the flexibility to switch out runners in the, in the, futures, in the future if, if necessary. And um, we chose Flink as, um, as our runner and um, the runtime is provided by, uh, by Kubernetes. And this helped us achieve the, the following KPIs. We have very little time and effort for, for teams to um, take their use case into production. Um, second one, no code whatsoever for, for very simple pipelines like uh, filtering out the data. And um, a very low count of use cases that are not satisfied by, uh, um, by this framework. Uh, currently, we have around 50 use cases in, uh, in production with uh, 160 deployments um, processing around 80 billion messages uh, per day. So from the um, high level point of view, um, we provide four components and then we uh, reuse services provided by uh, uh, other Adobe teams. Um, it's the UI, the, the one smart in yellow, the UI, the uh, centralized definition service, runtime APIs, and the, and the runners. So the UI is supposed to be a one-stop shop for, for creating and managing the, the, the streaming processes. It's supposed to be a facade for uh, the centralized definition service and the, and the runtime APIs. Um, it also provides some insights into the streaming process uh, through um, Grafana dashboards. Um, yeah, through Grafana dashboards. Um, the centralized definition service is the authoring layer of the product. Uh, it exposes RESTful APIs to do CRUD on, um, uh, on definitions, and definitions are basically JSON uh, objects that, uh, that are based on our uh, DSL. Uh, they're persisted into Cosmos DB, and they're basically blueprints. Um, they, they contain information uh, like which topics to read from, data from, uh, what uh, operations to perform, and uh, what to do with the, with the result, as in where to, which topics to publish the data to. Uh, the runtime API is, surprise, surprise, the um, runtime uh, layer of the, of the product. Uh, it um, just exposes some, some APIs to manage the actual deployments for the for the streaming jobs, and uh, once the the streaming job is up, um, it um, uh, reads data from Kafka, publishes data back to Kafka. Um, it may pull some packaged user functions from Artifactory, and um, uh, it also exposes some metrics to be scraped by uh, by Prometheus, and um, and it may also call some other Adobe services. Uh, either at startup or while while processing uh, the data. Um, next, I would like to focus a little bit on the on the runtime layer of of the product. Um, here we went with the operator pattern. So the runtime actually is split between two components. It's uh, the APIs and the custom uh, operator. Um, the APIs are doing basically CRUD on um, on uh, Kubernetes custom resources, and the custom resource uh, contains information like the definition ID, the um, um, the delivery guarantee, the uh, replica count, and the uh, um, let's say the the secrets um, uh, to be used to to access Kafka. Um, and the operator is listening to those custom resources and uh, is creating the Kubernetes resources in the, in the background. Uh, we're talking about deployments, uh, services, and uh, horizontal uh, pod autoscalers. Uh, on the right side of the slide, uh, we can see how and uh, where those streaming jobs are deployed. So first of all, they're partitioned by, um, by client. So one namespace will contain uh, jobs belonging only to that client. This way, we know that one cannot interfere with, with another, including uh, resource starve, uh, streaming jobs that don't even belong to the client. Um, and um, second of all, uh, we're 
looking into leveraging um, Spark, but uh, Spark the Spark Runner. But um, for now, we went with uh, the Flink Runner, and uh, every single job gets its own Flink uh, cluster. That means that every job gets one job manager and one or more uh, task manager pods. Um, at the end, when when the job is terminated, the operator tears down the the Flink cluster and um, all the Linger, lingering resources are uh, cleared up. Uh, this provides for better resource isolation as um, misbehaving jobs can only bring down uh, its own task managers. And it also uh, spreads the bookkeeping uh, between multiple um, job managers as every single streaming process gets one. And um, lastly, uh, these are basically the um, the phases that the uh, streaming job pods are going through. Uh, they're actually split into two containers, um, and we do that to um, achieve better um, um, separation of concerns. Um, and we have the init. A container responsible for pooling dependencies. Uh, so it will start. So when the streaming pod goes up, the init container will start by downloading the definition. And um, this is actually the first time we're downloading that JSON. Up until now, we only dealt with with definition IDs. Um, so we download it from the centralized definition service, and we persist it on disk for for later use. Um, if a JSON contains a packaged user function functions in the form of uh, group ID, artifact IDs, and um, the version. We will pull them from, for, from Artifactory and store it on disk. And uh, if the definition also contains um, uh, placeholders uh, for secrets or configurations, we will also download those. Um, so once the init container um, is done, uh, finishes successfully. Uh, the main container kicks in, and um, it will resolve. It will use the, the the JSON stored on disk to resolve resources, which are the Kafka topics. It will um, translate these steps within the definition to um, to the uh, Apache Beam DAG, and uh, it will submit them for execution. Uh, that is it uh, from my side. Um, I've included. Um, our LinkedIn's LinkedIn profiles. In case there are any questions after the after the summit, you can reach out. And um, the Medium article, if anybody gets a hold of the slides, I know it's not great to include the link in there, but um, that Medium article basically contains more or less the uh, um, the information I presented today. Thank you.